hello and thank you uh, for joining the latest iteration of the Gracie interview series of virtual gathering. We are super excited today to have uh, two amazing women in media joining us for a conversation. As we know, these are intended to be someone that you look at and think, I would love to just have a conversation with that person. And through the Alliance for Women in Media, we give you that opportunity to just listen to wisdom, hear nuggets of information that you might want to know, and you might take away something new. So it is my pleasure to introduce both Tanya Hart and Chesley Maddox-Dorsey. And I will start by introducing Tanya, who will take it from there and introduce Chesley. And Tanya is the host of Hollywood Live and Hollywood Live Extra through American Urban Radio Networks. Thank you so much for joining us, and I'll let you take it from here. Thank you, Becky. And in the spirit of AWM, I have the pleasure of introducing everyone to Chesley Maddox Dorsey, who is Chief Executive Officer of a Wonder Media Company, which is the parent company of American Urban Radio Networks, affectionately known as AURN and Super Radio. But let me just tell you this in the Boys Club of Radio, Chesley is the beacon of light. And so I'm so happy to be speaking with you today, Chesley. My pleasure. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's interesting. We're trying to impart a little bit of wisdom and just give people nuggets here. But in our world today, you know, there are multiple ways for women to find a path and a purpose, really. How has that changed from when you entered the landscape of women executives? Well, it's, you know, I think there's always been a great opportunity for people if they have desired it. And while we would prefer to have role models that look and feel like us, we always can take the best from other people. So when I got into the business, there were great role models. They just didn't happen to be women and African-American women. They were few and far between, but there were a lot of good traits and talents that you could learn from other people. And, you know, I would say today we have all of that, right? Yeah. People who don't look like us, people who don't sound like us, and then people who do. So take the best from the best and, you know, not to limit yourself to just one lane. Well, you certainly haven't done that. And I've got to ask you, who are your role models and contemporaries that you actually still rely on for guidance today? You know, I have so many. There are so many people. This industry is so rich with people, um, on-air personalities, uh, executives. I mean, when I'm on the... Um, uh, broadcast Hall of Famers. And every year we have such a problem figuring out who are the best of the best. And there's just a plethora of um, people. But I personally came up from the finance side. So I had great people like Fred Joseph, who ran Goldman Sachs for years. I also had Norman Wayne and Bob Weiss, who were the ultimate, you know, radio people. And in Black radio, Sid Small, I mean, no one better. Reagan Henry. Yeah. You have on-air talent like, you know, Dee Dee McGuire, of course, Kathy Hughes is on-air talent and an executive, which was wonderful as a role model. And then in today, I've got my girls, you know, my contemporaries, Julie Talbot at Premier and Heather Cohen and just a slew of women that are just so much fun and just keep it going. We work with each other and against each other and play and have fun. And, you know, it's just, it's all good. You know, it really is. And I think that that's where people sometimes don't understand. There's always been this misnomer that women can't work together. That's not true. And oh, especially in all. this business, in radio business, because we that's all we've got sometimes. You know, it's, it's, it is a business, but it is so much fun. I almost sometimes forget that, you know, yeah, you're in a business, right? Because you're really talking with people that you relate to on a regular basis. And so... Yeah, we compete and competition is great because it makes us better, but we have a heck of a lot of fun. And I think if people knew how much fun we had, it's a secret, right? Don't tell, <laughs> don't tell so many people because we're just, you know, it's we get to relate to people on a regular basis where they are. We get to take talent and develop it. We get to explore new frontiers. I mean, and as women, it's right in our wheelhouse. So it's just, it's, um, it's just marvelous. It's just a great opportunity and great opportunities. 
Well, you really have done very well. And the thing I love about you, Chesley, is that people actually really like you. I mean, there, sometimes you're doing, <laughs> no, seriously, you know what I'm talking about. Look, keep it real. Because, you know, it's hard to be an executive, especially as a woman. You have to make tough decisions and people always say you're pushy and all that. But you do it with a kind of a of a softness that people say, oh, wow, you know, I love this woman. And so, but as a head of a large black owned media company, does that bring extra responsibility in terms of social impact and, you know, those kinds of challenges, especially today? Well, we represent ourselves in that sense, right? So, um, you know, one of the things we talk about all the time is that we lead from our perspective and we're talking to us. So we're, I'm black. And so, it, you know, much of our staff is black. So we're representing ourselves. We're going to represent ourselves the best. You're not going to discount me. You're not going to talk down to me. You're not going to bully me. And so you're not going to bully the people that I represent either. So I think that gives us um, a, a relevancy that is probably um, uh, important in today's time because we're not going to, you know, we've been through our history. We know our history. We're not going to go to the back of the bus. We want to be in the front. We deserve to be in the front. We are the influencers. We are the uh, talent. We're out there on all lines. And so, yes, we're responsible. We have to be. We can't represent ourselves badly because it is ourselves. So, you know, I, I talk to Julie uh, Talbot all the time and say, okay, for premiere, you're representing a different group. For American Urban Radio, we're representing a different group. We're not going to be out-represented right? because we are who we are. So we have to shine with the best and brightest, the biggest talent, the bright lights like you, Tanya. I mean, that's really critical from our standpoint. We want to represent the best because we think we are. Well, we absolutely are. And we, like you said, I love it because we do know our history. But what does that mean in terms of dollars? Well, it means that we we know our impact, right? We know the impact and the influence of the black dollar and black consumers. And so don't, you know, in in look, this company is 49 going on 50 years old. Right. When it started, it was to represent African Americans and African Americans were discounted. We know the history of that. We've come a long way. Certainly hugely impactful is George Floyd's murder. We know how that changed the landscape of America and how we view each other and how we view ourselves. And so we're not in a position to say, well, give us, you know, 10 cents on a dollar or, or 90 cents on a dollar. We know we're worth more. We know our value and we value our worth. So, yes, you can have our influence, but it's going to cost you what it should because it's worth more. Absolutely. You know what, Jessica, is there any advice you received years ago that you still keep in mind today when you're making decisions? Because you have to make some really big decisions often. Yeah, you know what? It, it's funny. Um, Sid Small, who was the really uh, one of my big mentors and the predecessor of leading this company, said to me years ago when I was making a kind of a trite, I thought uh, I made a trite comment to a big decision. He said, let me tell you something. Your decisions impact whose children go to college, how the mortgages are paid. Don't take yourself too seriously, but don't be trite. So mm -hmm. think about the consequences of what you're deciding, both the intended consequences and the under, unintended consequences. People in this business have come and gone. This company has endured in part because of the level of responsibility we have to both our, all of our constituencies, our employees, our listeners, our affiliates, we have to be responsible to, to all of those people. So we have to think about things very carefully. We have to get in early. If it's um, we make bad decisions, we have to recover from those and get out quickly. And so being indecisive doesn't work. But being um, cavalier in your decision-making process also doesn't work. You have to be judicious and fair. And uh, everyone's not going to be happy with the decisions. We all know that. That's true. But you got to live with yourself. Yeah, you really do. What do you think it is about your upbringing that really prepared you for being the CEO that you are today? 
That's an easy answer. I had great parents. My parents um, really told us every day, you're not going to be uh, part of the crowd. You're going to stand out from the crowd. So when you stand out, make sure you're saying something. <laughs> you stand out and with the difference and that you accept everybody else with the difference. People with differences are good. Everyone's not going to look or think like you and you're not going to look or think like everybody else, but be unique and that's okay, right? Be yeah. different, that's okay. And so it's always given me a sense of openness and open-mindedness. Um, I know that other people um, have something to give. Everybody has something to give. And so take that in and see if you can't make it, you know, make it work, but not shutting anybody off, accepting everybody with their differences was always what my parents taught us. Wow. That makes a lot of difference too for everybody. You know, but what gives you hope today, Chesley, that more women will continue to kind of break that glass ceiling like you did? And and the next question or the next part of that question is, does it matter for women today, younger women coming up, do you think? Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, the young women today are so fierce. It's just wonderful. And we've only been doing this as women, really, right? Uh, I mean, we've got great role models, but they all were unique and individuals. We've actually got a larger number of women involved today than ever before. And that broad brush is really giving me a lot of hope. Women rule the world, or should. <laughs> or, they, or they should. I, yeah, we definitely I, should. I don't There's know no that question. the world would be, I don't know the world would be worse off if women, I don't know the world would be better off if there were more women in high positions, but I know it wouldn't be worse off. And so, Getting more women into positions of power and decision making is gives me great hope for the future. And young women really don't ask permission to do that. They're like, that's my birthright. I'm supposed to be here. And that's fantastic. I mean, we want people without the, um, what do they call it, the imposter syndrome. We want people to feel like they're supposed to be there, right? know that they're supposed to be there, supported to be there, and giving given different pathways. And that will give us um, ways to see it differently, right? Different, different glasses, different lenses, as opposed to one lane. We need, you're in California, right? We need that eight lane, or what is it, six lane highway out there? On They've the got 10 line. lanes out here. <laughs> exactly. We need lots of on-ramps and lots of on off ramps. It doesn't have to be just one way to do it, right? We have lots of different ways to do it, and there's many different ways to get in. Yeah. And that, I think, is really, really um, exciting. You know, I know how hard you work, and I know that you work most of the time. We can, I mean, I, sometimes I look at your schedule, and I'm like, how does she even do this? But you do. But when you get a moment to relax, Chesley, whenever that is, what do you enjoy doing? <laughs> you know, it's so funny because um, I have so much fun working that it's almost not like work. But I do recognize that, you know, we all need to de-stress. I love to read. Oh, nothing better than to curl up on a couch with a good book. Um, I, you know, read all the time. I also love watching old movies. You're in Hollywood and Hollywood Live. I love nothing better than watching an old black and white movie. And, you know, I watch an amazing amount of um, television. Yeah. That's also very exciting because there's so many different uh, content providers now than there used to be. So, so television is so much richer. People telling stories. And that, I guess, circle back, you know, to what I do at work. We're telling stories. We're yes. talking to different communities, different ways of telling stories, whether we tell them in a book, whether we tell them in a television show, whether we tell them on a radio show, through streaming. That's really what we're about because it's really connecting people. So there's hardly a distinction because it's all, you know, it's all uh, fun. Yeah, it I, I understand. I mean, we've all been doing this for years and you're right. It's kind of like we do it on weekends if we need to and we do it, you know, 
24 seven if you have to. And sometimes you do. <laughs> That's the other thing is when we're chasing these stories, it is sometimes 24 seven. It really, it's really is. It. It's worth it. <laughs> now, I got to ask you though, if you could create, recreate the world of media and it would be everything that you wanted it to be, what would that look like? Uh, I I would think, you know, I sort of look at things uh, through a different lens, right? And so I would think that the world of media has suffered from not being as inclusive as it could have been early on. People all have stories. They all need to have voices. And if people had had them early on, you know, in radio from 1938, in newspapers, of course, before, the more inclusive our medium is, the better off it is. The more we will thrive as opposed to just surviving. If we focus on a smaller group of people, then we're going to have less reach. If we focus on a larger group of people, we'll have more reach. We're a broad cast medium, so we need to have a broad cast mentality. <laughs> And that's, you know, that's what I would say. And I don't mean just from on air. I mean, from an ownership standpoint, yeah. too, the legacy of passing your stations down to other family members. You need to have a wide range of people involved in that mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. women, more minorities. Obviously, the tax certificate was an important part of that. But if that had happened 20 years earlier, just think of how much more broad our perspectives would be, how much more rich our lives would be. Yeah. Well, at least the good news is that people are starting to understand that. And like you said, it's always business and it really pays off for everybody. That's the other part of this. It's absolutely yeah. paying off. You know, inclusivity pays off for everyone. It's a win, win, right. win. That all that being said, I know that you've got big plans for AURN and, and the radio group. How do you plan to continue to grow the company, because I've got to tell you something. Congratulations, you, because I've been here for a while, but since you've been doing what you're doing now as CEO, it's like a world of difference. I want everybody to know that, because, you know, it's a woman <laughs> at the top, but anyway. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know, we, it's just because we've got great people. And if you can take great people and give them, you know, fill their, their tanks up with gas and let them go, that's really, um, you know, how you move, how you move forward. So we've got some interesting plans for the next 50 years. Um, we know that broadcasting, just the um, uh, traditional type of broadcasting is not enough. We know that people are listening to podcasting, so we hope to expand more into podcasting. We have a gaming vertical that we're starting, AURN Gaming to focus on our youth who are missing from listeners in our broadcast environment. They really, uh, you know, our youth are really focused on uh, gaming and animation and comic books. And so we're gonna focus on that. We're gonna go to where they are as opposed to saying, no, 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 come to us. We're gonna go to where they are. Uh, we're starting that next month, I believe. And we, going to do some other interesting things. We're looking at a really exciting um, scripted television series, for God's Ooh. sakes, that will be really, uh, <laughs> I think you know a little bit about that, Tanya. Yeah, a little, but, a little bit about that one. It's, uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to give the title, it's called Invisible Eagles, and it's a yeah. great series about the early, early Black aviators long before the Tuskegee Airmen and uh, their travails. They were kind of like the top guns 100 years ago, but they're so current today. <laughs> right. And as I said, everyone is always fascinated by flying, right? Everyone, right. It, because it really is quite a miracle that we can get up in a plane that takes off. Right? So we're always fascinated by aviation and how that works. And so I think that's a story that needs to be brought to life in a, in a serial uh, concept. And we're excited to be attached to that. So thank you. 
Yeah, thank you. Well, Chesley, I think we're probably going to wrap it up because, you know, we could talk for a long, long time about a whole lot of things. Uh, it is important for people to know that, you know, you are also a wife and a, and a mother uh, and you've got a, a whole other life that goes on besides your work that you love so well. But just to wrap it up, what would you like to leave uh, our audience with today? And just a bit of a pearl of wisdom from Chesley so I, I, you know, I would say for, again, speaking to, uh, you know, women in media, right, is that the sky's the limit. Don't, uh, don't, don't think of just what's come before you. Dream big. Dream big mm -hmm. and articulate it well, and you'll find the path to get there. Don't be limited. Don't be limited by what you see around you. Dream on. Dream on. I like that. That's a good one. Dream on, everybody. Uh, words of wisdom from our CEO, Chesley Maddox Dorsey. Thank you so much and continued success to you. I know that you will continue to take everybody along with you to the heights that you tend to reach all of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tanya. I follow in your footsteps as well. <laughs> yeah, okay. Turn well, it back over to Miss Becky. Yeah, well, that was um, maybe the best way to ever end one of our Gracie interview series conversations of Dream On. One of the things that we love to talk about is the Alliance for Women in Media is now 71 years old. And wow. who would have ever thought and think of the dreams that those women had born out of the National Association of Broadcasters of NAB 70 years ago, their courage and their dreams that they had. And we are so grateful for the two of you who are continuing on a legacy like that. So thank you for your time today, for your wisdom. I have some notes personally that I could go on, but we ask everyone that's watching this to stay connected to AWM. Join, join AWM, donate to the foundation. Those are what is important to keep programming like this going. And as Chesley said, that next generation that is coming up and fierce and strong and fearless we are an organization that is helping to connect them. So for now, thank you so much. We'll see you on our next interview.